who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Good morning. Light and peace in Jesus Christ our Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Last Sunday we lit the candle of joy. We light it again along with the candles of hope and peace. Again to remind us that Jesus, born in Bethlehem, will come again to fulfill all of God's promises and will bring all of us hope, peace, and joy. Today we light the fourth candle of Advent, the candle of love. When the angel Gabriel told Mary that a special child would be born to her, she was filled with the love of God. She sang a song that began with the words, my soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Just as the birth of Jesus gave great love to his mother, so the presence in the world gives love to all those who would come to know him. He heals and gives all hope, peace, joy, and love when they come to believe in him. From hope there is peace, from peace there is joy, and love is experienced. We light the candle of love today to remind us that when Jesus is born in us, we have love, and that through him we have life. Love is like a burning candle that shines in a dark place. As we look upon this candle, let us celebrate the love that God has for each of us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the love you give us. We ask that as we wait for all the promises to come true and for Christ to come again, that you would remain present with us. Help us today and every day to worship you, to hear your word, and to do your will by sharing your love with each other. We ask this in the name of the one who was born in Bethlehem. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. we will go unto the altar of God. To God who gives joy to my soul. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. My dear brothers and sisters, let us confess our sins to God and prepare ourselves that we might be found worthy to participate in this holy sacrifice. And now, let us make an example an examination of our conscience before the altar of God. Having confessed our sins unto God and asking for his forgiveness, I will recite the Confidior. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, who knows the innermost secrets of my heart that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. 
In your presence, O God, I earnestly repent of all my sins, and I am truly sorry that I have offended you. Most loving Father, have mercy on me and forgive my sins. I resolve to amend my life to improve and sanctify it, that I may become worthy to serve you faithfully all the days of my life. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray to the Lord, our God, for me. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. And your people will rejoice in you. Show us your mercy, Lord. And grant us your salvation. Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come to you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hail, favored one. The Lord is with you. Most blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. You are the glory of Jerusalem, the surpassing joy of Israel. You are the splendid boast of our people. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, by your divine decree, the Word was made flesh in the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary. As we commemorate the miracle of the Incarnation, inspire us to your service and guide us to your truth. Dwell in our hearts and hear our prayers on our behalf. For Mary truly is the Mother of God. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. On this being the fourth Sunday of Advent, we take the first reading from the second book of Samuel. When King David was settled in his palace, the Lord had given him rest from his enemies on every side. He said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am living in a house of cedar, while the ark of God dwells in a tent. Nathan answered the king, Go, do whatever you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that night the Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Should you build me a house to dwell in? It was I who took you from the pasture and from the care of the flock to be commander of my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you went, and I have destroyed all your enemies before you, and I will make you famous like the great ones of the earth. I will fix a place for my people Israel. I will plant them so that they may dwell in their place without further disturbance. Neither shall the wicked continue to afflict them as they did of old, since the time I first appointed judges over my people Israel. I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord also reveals to you that he will establish a house for you. And when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up 
you heirs after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne will stand firm forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gradual for today. Now, this is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law. The second reading for today is taken from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, to him who can strengthen you, according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret for long ages, but are now manifested through the prophetic writings and according to the command of the eternal God, made known to all nations to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, be glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the Lord, the God of all mankind. Is anything impossible for me? Alleluia, alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory be to you, Lord. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said, and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of David, his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relationships with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore this child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month for her, who is called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. 
For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. These words are taken from the Gospel according to St. John. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters. On this, the fourth Sunday of Advent, we light the fourth candle, the candle of love. Over the past three weeks, we lit candles which represent hope, peace, and joy. Three great pillars of Christianity. Today we reflect, after lighting the fourth candle, on the greatest pillar of all in Christianity, and that being love. You know, there is no power greater than love, for it has been said that love conquers all. I remember growing up and hearing a song that the Beatles wrote that had four words to its title, All You Need Is Love. And in the lyrics, we find that nothing is impossible as long as you have love. You know, there have been millions of words and hundreds of thousands of books written over the centuries describing and speaking of love. Love has a very simple definition. It is defined as an intense feeling of deep affection. You know, it is said that when you find love, you cling to that power of love, for you know that that love is real. For it changes, it transforms, and it makes a person better. When I would teach children in catechism, and to try to set a foundation, I taught them two words, physical and spiritual. I explained that Love can be experienced in life by our five outward senses. To see love, to hear love, to touch, smell, and to speak of love. But true love is not just experienced, but it finds its beginning by being felt. Although the heart is not directly associated with the power of love, there have been countless writings that say that love truly comes from the heart. While I am no expert on the subject of love, I have felt, as I'm sure you have all, at one time or another in your life, what you understand as being love. Today, I would like to share with you the thoughts of two Christian writers who spoke of love. They were Saint Paul and Saint John. In the 13th chapter, verses 1 through 3, of the first letter of Saint Paul the Apostle to the Corinthians, he addresses love. He writes, If I speak in tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanking cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can phantom all mysteries and have all knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. And if I give all that I possess to the poor and give my body to hardship, that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. 
Paul says that without love, one is empty, one is nothing, and one gains nothing. In the fourth chapter of the first letter of John, verses 7 through 12, he speaks of love. He writes, dear friends, let us love one another. For love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us, that he sent his one and only Son into the world that we might have life through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but he loved us and sent his son as an atonement, a sacrifice for our own sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God but if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. My dear brothers and sisters, in just these six scripture passages, love is mentioned 13 times. You know, the world needs love. It needs to be expressed among all people as we come into this most special season. In today's gospel, we are brought to know the depth of God's love. It is found in a young virgin named Mary, who was righteous unto the Lord. She loved God, and God chose this love from her to choose her to bear his only begotten son. Even when the understanding didn't make sense to Mary, in the end, out of her love, she said, I am the Lord's handmaid. Let it be done as it is said. What faith that Mary possessed, and it all centered in love. My dear brothers and sisters, if but for a moment we could all reflect upon the meaning of love that God had for Mary, as well as the love that he has for all of us at this moment, to reflect that by sending his Son into the world, he chose him to die for us, to bring eternal life for us. And it is in this love that God has for us that if we truly find that message of love, we all come closer to understand that spiritual love that comes from within. It is a gift that God placed inside of each of us, for it comes from Him. It is in the good news of Jesus Christ that we see love in his life, in his healings, and in his teachings. That birth that took place that night in Bethlehem was given out of love, and through our willingness to follow the good news, the message of love from our Lord Jesus Christ in our lives, we truly become perfected in the love that God has for us. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. The Lord swore an oath to David, a pledge never to be broken. Your own offspring I will set upon your throne. and sisters that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and for the benefit of his holy church. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed are you Lord our God for you have revealed the mystery of our salvation. Accept these offerings which we bring before you and prepare for the coming of your Son. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 
The whole Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your whore hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly worthy and just and right unto salvation. That at we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto who thee, O Holy Lord, Father Almighty, Eternal God. That at by sinning on earth Jesus Christ, you didst reveal your goodness and unending love. And, and so we gather with the voices of the angels, archangels, and seraphim, with all the saints of your holy church, and give praise and thanksgiving unto you, our heavenly Father. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of the glory of your majesty. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer up to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests and with all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith which comes to us from the apostles. We remember especially in our prayers, our prime bishop, Anthony, and Paul, our bishop. Remember your servants, O Lord. This day let us remember in our prayers the sick, the suffering, and the dying, the homeless, the hungry, and the unemployed, all those who are suffering from the ravages of the COVID-19 pandemic. Let us remember in our prayers this day for the peace and blessing of God to rest upon doctors and nurses and first responders and all health care workers. Let us remember in our prayers this day all abused and neglected children in our world as well as for all victims of violence both here and abroad. Let us remember in our prayers all those who serve in our armed forces, both here and abroad. And finally, for all here present, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer, or who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for the hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God, we join in communion with and honor above all others the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also, your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering and that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and to make it pleasing unto yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being, he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so grave for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven to you, his almighty Father, and giving thanks to you, 
He blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins, as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice and immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the Son of Faith and who now sleep in peace. To these souls, the Lord, in all rest in Christ, grant we pray a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and with all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord, amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, Revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever, Amen. let us pray. Instructed by our Savior's teaching and following divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, from all evils, past, present, and future. And by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, also Andrew and all the saints, grant us peace in our day that, being supported by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. 
May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us to receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, who did say to your apostles, my peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Do not look upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching and never let me be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be caused for my judgment or condemnation. Though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master, awaken in all of us a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord for all the graces he hath rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, let us now offer a prayer a spiritual communion. Let us pray. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. <laughs>
rejoice heartily. O daughter Zion, shout for joy, O daughter Jerusalem. See, your king shall come to you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, you chose Mary to be the mother of your son, to fulfill an ancient prophecy. May we, who have shared in this Eucharist, also share in her joy as we await the promised one. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy Trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which, which I, though unworthy, have offered up into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may be effective for myself and all those for whom I have offered it through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory be to you, Lord. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through him all things came into being, and apart from him, nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in him found the life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh. And made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God. Dear brothers and sisters, I welcome you as we offer the holy sacrifice of the Eucharist. It is my thoughts and prayers that God would bless all of us as we gather in his holy name. Let us conclude this morning's service with a prayer for the intentions of which we have offered during Mass and also concluding with prayers for the repose of the souls of all our faithful departed loved ones. May God bless you as we approach the most holy day, the solemnity of the nativity of Jesus Christ. God be with all of you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. 
as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And for the repose of the souls of all our faithful departed loved ones, eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. May perpetual light shine upon them. May they all rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.